Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for online worship this morning. We're going to start off by doing some singing. This song is about praising God no matter what season you're in. Here we go. This is my prayer in the desert When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides And this is my prayer in the fire In weakness or trial or pain There is a faith proved more worth than gold, so refine me, Lord, through the flame. Cause I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and He is here. This is my prayer in the battle When triumph is still on its way I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ So firm on His promise I'll stand And I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice I will declare God is my victory and He is here. I will bring praise, I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory and He is here. my life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship in all of my life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship In all of my life In every season You are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship I will bring I will bring praise I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall be I will rejoice and I will declare God is my victory and He is here. And this is my prayer in the harvest when favor and providence flow. I know I'm filled to be emptied again. This seed I've received, I will sow. Amen. Welcome to another week of online worship here at Mantra Zion United Methodist Church. My name is Jennifer Dyer. I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adults. We have a few uh, announcements for you before we begin worship this morning. The first one is Pastor Bill and I are excited to let you know that we are starting a new book study called Unafraid, Living with Courage and Hope in Uncertain Times. This is a book by Adam Hamilton, and we thought, based on our current state, it'd be a perfect time for this book. Um, Some of the issues that are going to be talked about in this book are things like terrorism, race, crime, failure, loneliness, illness, and dying. We're going to look at the fear associated with all of these things. 
This is going to be offered in a Zoom meeting format, and there are two times offered. One is on Tuesday mornings at 11 a.m., and the second is Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. We're gonna start on May 19th or May 21st, respectively, and run for five consecutive weeks. If you're interested in signing up for this study, please email the office and let us know which time you're interested in, and we'll gather the list of names together and send out a link with the meeting information um, closer to the time of the study. Another announcement I have for you is that Following suit with East Ohio Camps that has canceled all of their summer programming, we have made the tough decision to cancel in person both our summer mission trip and our vacation Bible school. We're looking at new and different ways that we can still provide these opportunities for your family in a safe way. Um, so please be on the lookout for that in the weeks to come. Thank you. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 3-13. through 13. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It's enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horab, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? As we come into this time of prayers of joys and concerns, Here's one video of joy from the Lewis family. Hey, Pastor Bill. After watching church on Sunday, the Lewis family thought it would be a good idea to showcase all the positive that we've done since we've been home. For example, I have be been learning how to read. I completed extra math. I finished my MBA. I learned how to make yummy bread. The boys have gotten really good at chess. Our home garden has never been better, and we're getting lots of projects done around the house. I'm teaching kindergarten, second grade, and art classes to the boys. We're hoping we can share all of these positives from our video during church and can't wait to be able to get together again soon. Have a great week. Love, the Lewis family. Let's join together in a time of prayer. Lord of the ages, in our busy lives, we do not always make time to love, to pray, or to sing your praises. We want to be strong, yet we often feel out of control. Buffeted by the winds of change, rocked by the earthquakes in our relationships, burned by the fires of doubt, 
Forgetting that we cannot see, we ask, why have you forgotten me? Help us trust your presence. Even when we feel utterly alone, trapped in our dark night of the soul, with the promise of Christ as our hope, lead us from our own wilderness wanderings into the well-tended garden of your love. Open our hearts today, O Lord, to feel the powerful strength and love you have for us. Help us to listen, not only with our ears, but with our spirits, for your words of compassion and healing. Enable us to become more faithful disciples for you. We ask all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within and without, O oh, Lamb of God, I Good morning. Welcome to uh, our children's moment. So kids, come on down. This is your time to so get close to the TV screen and come and join us. For our children's moment today, we're going to talk about a big word. It's a word, it's, it's called recognize. How many of you know what it means to recognize somebody? Now to recognize somebody means that we, we see them with our eyes and we know who it is. Or maybe we hear their voice and we know who it is. And, and uh, this last Saturday, I, my wife, Cindy, she had me shave my beard because she said I look like I'm 80 years old, and I'm not 80 years old. It's nothing wrong with being 80 years old. But, but I'd shave my beard, and I'd walk past the mirror, and I don't even recognize myself anymore. I'm like, who is that person that I'm looking at in the mirror? I, sometimes we can't even recognize people that we know the most in our lives. Now, there were two disciples one day, and they were walking down the road to Emmaus, and they were feeling kind of sad because they had lost their jobs. I mean, I mean, Jesus had been crucified. And they had heard stories that Jesus had come back um, and was resurrected, but they hadn't seen him yet. And so these two disciples were walking down the road, and then suddenly a third person decides to join them. And they were walking beside them, but they didn't recognize who it was. And he just kept walking with them on their journey to Emmaus. And sometimes what it takes to do is we don't recognize people with our eyes, 
and we can't recognize them like because maybe they look a little bit differently. But when we hear their voice, sometimes we're able to recognize them better. And so what we're going to do now is off the camera is a special mystery guest that we have here. And he's going to be reading a special um, uh, announcement. And what I want you to do is to guess who it is um, who's reading this. You are not going to believe it, but two men were walking and talking with someone they didn't even recognize. Hmm. Now that's interesting. Now I wonder, who, how many of you out there can guess who that is? Do anybody out there think it was Santa Claus? It wasn't Santa Claus. Was it the Easter Bunny? It wasn't the Easter Bunny. Was it the Apostle Peter? That's a good guess, but it wasn't. Does anybody want to guess who it is? It's, it's, uh, it's Joe Lehman, our awesome music director. Come on up here, Joe, and wave. So now you recognize the voice, and now you can recognize the face. Perfect. Now we've got another extra mystery guest. and see, Let's see if you can guess who this is. You are not going to believe it, but two men were walking and talking with someone they didn't even recognize. Hmm. I wonder if you can recognize who that is. Was that Mother Teresa? No, it wasn't Mother Teresa. How many other people else, else have guesses out there? Was it, hmm, was it Jesus' mother, Mary? It wasn't Jesus' mother, Mary, either. And I bet you, come on up here and just introduce yourself, mystery guest. It was our awesome, awesome youth and young adult um, ministry leader, Jennifer Dyer. So great to have you here, Jennifer. Awesome to be here. <laughs> cool, cool. And so sometimes we recognize with our eyes, and sometimes we recognize with our ears. And so these two disciples who were walking down the road, it was Jesus who had joined them, but they didn't even recognize who it was. Until later that night when they were sitting down to have dinner, suddenly Jesus broke bread with them. And a little light bulb went off in their heads that right before their eyes was their Savior and they finally recognized it was Jesus who was with them. They recognized the fact that Jesus had risen from the, uh, the grave and he was no longer in the tomb and that Jesus would be with them then and forever with all of us. Friends, it is important that we are able to open our eyes to be able to see God moving all around us and to see God's love wherever God comes. And so let's go to prayer this morning. Dear Lord, open our eyes so we can see your love and we can hear your voice. Open our eyes so we can see your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone and I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word, my hope, 
Our second scripture this morning comes from Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. But we begin our sermon series this week um, on the the, the lies that we tell ourselves in our lives. Um, I think it's a sad state of our humanity that so often so much of our daily living can be guided by things that aren't even true. And so one of the lies that we're going to be addressing this particular Sunday is a lie that we can tell ourselves in some of the darkest and hardest points of of our existence. Perhaps we're having a really bit miserable period of time and we start believing that I will never get past this or I will never get through this misery that I'm experiencing. The fact is, it's not true. And the God that loves us never wants us to be stuck. God doesn't want us to become paralyzed where we stand. But the more that we listen to these things that aren't true, the more that we allow ourselves to be guided by these lies, the more likely it is that we will get stuck on spin cycle in the heartaches of life. We'll find ourselves defeated by rejection. We'll find ourselves squashed by inadequacy. Perhaps we'll even find ourselves stalling and losing motivation. But this isn't God's will for any of us. As a matter of fact, it's the God who loves us and wants us to be set free in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants us to be free to go be world changers world changers, which is inherent in who we are because we are disciples of Jesus Christ in the world. And so one of the things that uh, we are doing is we're reading through a book that Jennifer Dyer introduced to us. It's a book called Girl, Wash Your Face. It's written by Rachel Hollis, and it addresses all of these different lies that we tell ourselves in our lives. And uh, I've really enjoyed reading it. I've only read about three chapters, but this book by Rachel Hollis will help to guide some of our sermons in the upcoming weeks. And so once again, this this Sunday, we're addressing the lie that makes us believe that I will never get past this. And there are certainly moments in our existence, moments of our lives in which we feel this misery heaped upon our shoulders, perhaps a misery we never asked for, and we think to ourselves, goodness, I will never get beyond this miserable moment. I remember back in college getting assigned to papers that were supposedly like 15 pages I was supposed to write. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I will never be able to do that. And then I got down further into my educational career and and I had to write my doctoral thesis. And I wrote my doctoral thesis and then I rewrote it and then I rewrote it again. And then I had several people um, uh, make read the paper and read my thesis, and they each gave me suggestions about how to make it better, so I rewrote it again, and then rewrote it again. 
And I found myself in a constant cycle of rewriting that took over a year, and I thought to myself, I will never be done writing this thing. All the while, I had this horrible looming date in the back of my mind. It was a date in which I was going to have to go and defend the work that I had done in front of a panel of professors. I was going to have to make my defense. And as the date got closer and closer and I still wasn't ready, I thought to myself, I will never be prepared. I will never have this thesis be as good as I want it to be. And all I can say is thank goodness for deadlines. Because the day came when the opportunity to change that thesis, to write anything different, that, that opportunity, that door closed in my life. And when I showed up for my defense, I simply had to show up with whatever I had available to me. And I think that's a blessing. And that's the way that life often works too. That we can never be fully prepared for the momentous or even the monstrous, monstrous days that we experience. But thankfully we are created by a God who loves us and makes us capable of navigating even the most treacherous of waters. But there are still moments in which we lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that we will never get through this. We will never get past this. Now the Old Testament prophet, the Old Testament prophet Elijah probably felt that way at a certain point in his life. He found himself on, on the run. He had gone from being the, the, the trusted voice of reason for the people of God to becoming labeled public enemy number one. And as he was being hunted, he ran for his life, and he probably felt like the world was against him. There are days in which we probably feel like the world is against us too. Perhaps when we're cut off from one another, we're cut off from our friends right now during this time period of social distancing, and we sit in our homes and we look outside of the window, and perhaps the world doesn't look very caring. Or perhaps the world looks unfeeling. And we look out of the windows of our homes and we fail to find a single friend out there. Well, Elijah probably felt that he was all alone also. But that's another lie that we tell ourselves. Because friends, we are never truly alone. The God who loves us travels with us wherever we go. Even if we go into the valley of the shadow of death, this God follows us there. Our Savior Jesus Christ promises us to be with us this day and for every day until the age, until the end of the ages. And so Elijah was going into his own valley of the shadow of death. He was experiencing that. That was the season his life was in. He had a price on his head. He was being hunted. He was running for his life. And as he was in that valley of the shadow of death, he kind of got stuck there. As he was running, he didn't take time to eat. He didn't take time to sleep. He didn't take time to rest. And when our bodies become physically worn down, then it also becomes taxing on our minds as well. And our souls also find themselves drawing empty. And that's where Elijah was when he laid himself down at the mouth of a cave, taking refuge in a cave. And he simply called out to God, pleading with God to just come and take his life. This was a moment that Elijah thought that he would never get beyond. He would never get past it. Friends, all of us can be in those moments. And one of the keys to moving beyond those impossible days is to admit the ugliness of our situation. And sometimes we have to say it out loud. But when we voice our fears out loud, when we speak about the pain that we're experiencing, when we talk about our heartaches, somehow then we're able to process them and work with them in a different way. And so when Elijah spoke his fears out loud to God, God came to him. He didn't leave him alone there in the cave. But when God came, he didn't come as a, a whirlwind or a tornado or a fiery storm or an earthquake or any other means of disaster. But rather, God showed up and came to Elijah in his most desperate moment as a solid voice of calm, a voice of quiet, a voice of peace. And he looked at Elijah laying down on the ground and he asked me, he said, Elijah, what are you doing there? Get up and eat and live. Get up and live. So many times we need to hear that voice of reason. We need to hear those voices of calm in our own lives. And until we voice our fears out loud, then somehow those fears can feel like they are insurmountable. But the God who loves us has a plan for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For know that I have plans for you, plans to prosper you, says God, 
and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The fact that God plans to give us a future means that we are not going to be stuck in this present moment forever. But rather this present day too will pass. And there is a future that is better than this moment that God is planning for us. Elijah was in the process of trying to get there. And when we find ourselves stuck in that present moment, when we find ourselves stuck in the misery, I know myself personally, I just want God to come rush in and fix the problems. I just want God to come and rush in and do the hard thing. But God doesn't usually work in that way. God doesn't usually intervene in that way. But God does come to us, much like he did with Elijah. And God came to Elijah giving him the good advice of a good counselor. Get up and get something to eat. Because God wasn't going to fix all of Elijah's problems, and Elijah was going to have to face some scary and difficult days ahead. But with something in his, some food in his stomach, and with a different perspective, Elijah realized God had given him exactly what he needed, which is two feet to walk forward, step by step by step, out of this present day of misery, into stepping forward into God's future for him walking beyond those places of brokenness. God doesn't want us to get stuck. And God doesn't ever want us to feel trapped in life either. Now the author of the book, um, Girl, Wash Your Face, Rachel Hollis, in that chapter that addresses that lie that says, I will never get past this, she shares in that chapter a very personal story from her life in which she herself had become stuck. You see, she grew up in a household um, in which her older brother had a significant mental illness. who was diagnosed when he was just a young teenager. And tragically, just a few years later after diagnosis, her brother took his own life. Rachel was just a young girl at the time period, and she was the one who found her older brother. Now, for years, Rachel kept thinking about this. She, all she could think about was what she had seen. All she could think about was the, the heartache of losing this brother that she loved. And that because her mind was on this constant spin cycle of thinking about the details of finding a brother, of thinking about the loss, she couldn't love the people that mattered most in her life the way that she wanted to. As a matter of fact, she found herself loving her children and loving her husband in a very distant way. She kept planning in her mind, preparing herself to lose them at any moment. She said she planned her funerals for her kids and her funeral for her husband, expecting that they may be gone in any day. All of this was happening because of her experience of finding and losing her own brother. Until at long last, she finally decided to tell her husband about what was happening in her mind. She shared some of the details, even down to the very last of the horrific details of what it was like to find her brother with her husband. Friends, when we keep the sorrows inside of our hearts, when we keep our fears locked away by ourselves in private in our minds, we can find ourselves getting stuck on that constant spin cycle and of not being able to get beyond the, the misery that we're experiencing. But somehow when we speak our pain out loud, when we speak our fears out loud, somehow they become less scary. I'm beyond thankful to have both a wife and a sister who are willing to listen to all of the sorrows and fears that I have in my life. And they don't come in to rush in to fix them. I don't even ask them that they come in to fix them. But because they listen to me, then somehow my fears and my sorrows become more manageable. And that's what happened with Rachel as well. That Rachel spoke her fears and her, and her sorrows to her husband. And her husband didn't try to fix the issue. She didn't try to fix the problem. But he listened to her. And because he listened to her, and because he now knew what was going on with her, he was also available to help to carry the burden that she was carrying. And so at long last, we have to get to a point and recognize that when we get stuck in those places that we think we can't get past, our nightmares, the nightmares of life, can overtake our dreams. And Rachel Hollis had to make a determination. She had to determine that the trauma that she had experienced was not going to define the rest of the life that she lived. She had to ask herself, will I just lay down and just give up? Will I allow the, heart, the sorrow of my heart and the tragedy that I have found in my life to color every other experience, every other happiness that I've ever had. She made the determination that trauma was not going to have the last word on her life. Friends, we believe in a God whose last word is not crucifixion. 
The last word that Jesus speaks into our lives is a word of hope, a word of promise, a word of a future. Friends, traumas do not get to win in our lives. And so a couple of words of advice from a woman who lost her brother to a suicide. She said we have to speak our pain out loud. We can't think that we're going to deal with it all on our own, inside of our own brains. It's that, it's, that's where we find ourselves getting stuck. She ended up going to a counselor and she had confessed to the counselor that she couldn't get herself off of this constant cycle of thinking about the details of finding her brother. And so her counselor told her, he said, Rachel, you admitted yourself that you think about this on a daily basis. And that was true. What she told her, he's like, Rachel, then you decide and you choose when in your day you're going to think about it. Set a timer for yourself. And so Rachel did. And so while the timer is going in Rachel's life, what she does, she takes the time to think about the details of finding her brother. She takes the time to think about how bad it hurt to lose him, a man, a person, or brother that she lost. And when that timer goes off, she is then set free to allow her mind to think about other things, no longer trapped in that horrible, constant spin cycle. Friends, God doesn't want us to get stuck. And God doesn't want our lives to be guided by lies that aren't even at all true. There are moments in which we will be tempted to think that we will never get past whatever misery that we are experiencing. But as we know from the book of Ecclesiastes is that there are all seasons that all change. That every season changes. That there is a time to, to, have, to be joyous and there is a time to be sorrow, to sorrowful. But none of them last forever. And that we believe in a God who gave great advice to, to Elijah. And the advice is also for us that in our places of brokenness, Christ is calling us to stand up, to get something to eat, to get up and to live. For God has plans for us, plans not to, to harm us, but to prosper us, plans for all of us to give us a hope and a future. In the name of his Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed victory is won and he is risen from the dead and I will drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome and the grave
Friends, we send you out into this week wanting you to believe with all your heart that whatever struggles you have, you are not alone. And this too shall pass. We will be together again soon. Whatever season you are in right now is not your forever. May God's richest blessings be with you now and forevermore.